Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. Welcome back to Orlando, everybody. This is Pentaho World, hashtag PWorld17, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host, Jim Kabilis. Donna Perlich is here. She's the Chief Product Officer of Pentaho, and a many-time CUBE guest. It's great to see you again. Yes, Thanks I for coming know. on. Yeah, no problem, happy so, to be here. So, yeah, I'm thrilled that you guys decided to sort of reinitiate this event. You took a year off, but we yeah. were here in 2015 and learned a lot about Pentaho, and especially about your customers and how they're applying this sort of end-to-end -end data pipeline platform that you guys have developed over a decade you know, plus. Um, but it was right after the acquisition uh, by Hitachi, Let's start there, how has that okay. gone? <laughs> and so they, they brought you in, kind of left you alone for a while, but what's going on? Bring us up to date. Yeah, so it's funny because it was two, 2015, right. was Pintaha World, second one, and we were sort of like, wow, okay, we're part of this new company, which was great. And so for the first year, we were really just driving against our core big data integration, analytics business, and capturing a lot of that early big data market. <clears throat> and then probably in the last six months, with the initiation of Hitachi Vantara, which really is less about you know Pentaho being merged into a company, and I think Brian covered it in the keynote. It was we're gonna we're gonna become a brand new entity, and which Hitachi Vantara is now a new company focused around software. So obviously, you know they acquired us for all that big data orchestration and analytics capability, and so now as part of that bigger organization, we have we're really kind of at the center of that in terms of moving from edge to outcomes, as Brian talked about, and kind of how do we focus on data, right? Digital transformation and then achieving the outcome. So that's, that's sort of where we're at right now, which is exciting. So now we're part of this bigger portfolio of products that we have access to in some ways. And so I should point out, Dave called you the CPO of Pentaho, but in fact, you're the CPO of Hitachi Vantara. No, Vantara. no so correct? I am not. Um, I am the CPO for the Pentaho product line. Yes. So it's a good, it's a good point though, because yeah. Pentaho brand, the product brand, stays the same yeah. because obviously we have 1,800 customers and a whole bunch of them are all around here. Um, so yeah, so I cover that product line for Very Hitachi good. Vantara. Well, and there's a diverse set of products in the portfolio, so yes. I'm, I'm actually not sure it makes sense to have a chief product officer for Hitachi Vantara, right? Maybe for different divisions it makes sense, right? But so, I got to ask you, before the acquisition, how much were you guys thinking about IOT and industrial IOT? I mean, it was, must have been on your mind. I mean, yeah. back in 2015, certainly it was a discussion point and GE was pushing all this stuff out there yeah, with ads oh, and absolutely. things like yeah. that. But how much was Pentaho thinking about it and, and how has that accelerated since the acquisition? Yeah, so you know, at that time in my role, I, I had product marketing, I think I'd just taken product management. And what we were seeing was all these customers that were starting to leverage machine generated data and we were thinking, well, this is this is mm. IoT, you know. This is, and I remember going to a couple of our friendly analyst folks, and they were like, "Yeah, that's IoT." And so it was interesting. It was right before we were acquired, so we'd always focused on these blueprints, right? Of you know, we got to find the repeatable patterns, whether it's customer 360 and big data. And we said, well, there's some kind of emerging pattern here of people leveraging sensor data to get a 360 of something right, whether it's a customer or a ship at sea. And so we started looking at that and going, we should, we should, we should start going after this opportunity. And in fact, some of the customers we had for a long time, like IMS, who spoke today, you know, all around the connected cars, and they were one of the early ones. And then the last year, we've probably seen like more than 100% growth in customers that are purely from a Pentaho perspective, leveraging machine generated data with some other type of data for context to see the outcome. So yeah, we were seeing it then, and then when we were acquired, it was kind of like, oh, well, this is cool, now we've been, now we're part of this bigger company that's going after IOT. So absolutely, we were looking at it and starting to see those early use cases. Right. Now about a, a decade or more ago, Pentaho at the time became very much a pioneer in open source analytics. You incorporated Weka, the open source code base for you know, pr machine learning, data mining, and so forth, into the core of your platform. Now today here at the conference, you've announced Pentaho 8.0. 
which I, from what I can see is, is, is an interesting release because it brings stronger integration with the way the open source analytics stack has evolved. There's some Spark streaming integration, there's some Kafka, some Hadoop and so forth. Can you give us a sense for what are the main points of 8.0, the differentiators for that release, and how it relates to where Pentaho has been and where you're going as a product group within Hitachi Vantara? Yeah, so starting with kind of where we've been and where we're going, as you said, we know Anthony DeShazer, uh, our head of customer success, said today, 13 years, right? 13 years, I think, on Friday that Pintaho started with a bunch of guys who were like, hey, we can figure out this BI thing and solve all the data problems and deliver the analytics in an open source environment. So that's absolutely where we came from. You know, obviously over, over the years with big data emerging, we focused heavily on the big data integration and then delivering the analytics. So with 8.0, it's a perfect spot for us to be in because if we look at IOT and the amount of data that's being generated and then the need to sort of address streaming data, data that's moving faster, this is a great way for us to kind of pull in a lot of the capabilities needed to go after those types of opportunity and solve those kinds of challenges. So the first one is really all about how can we connect better to streaming data and as you mentioned, it's Spark streaming, it's connecting to Kafka streams, it's connecting to the Knox gateway, all things that are about you know, streaming data. And then in the scale up, scale out, kind of how do we better maximize the processing resources? We announced in 7.1, I think we talked to you guys about it, the adaptive execution layer. So the idea that you could choose the execution layer or the execution engine you want based on the, the um, processing you need. So you can choose the PDI engine, you can choose Spark, you can choose, you know, hopefully over time we're going to see other engines emerge, so we, we made that easier. We added Hortonworks support to that, and then this concept of, so that's the scale up, but then when you think about the scale out, you've got to, sometimes you want to be able to distribute the, re, the, the processing across across your, your nodes, and maybe you run out of capacity in a Pentaho server, you can add nodes now, and then you can kind of get rid of that capacity, and so this concept of worker nodes that we use some of the, to your point earlier about the Hitachi um, portfolio, we use some of the services in the foundry layer um, that Hitachi's been building as, as a, a load platform, balancer. Right? As, as part of that, yes. Uh -huh. And so we could leverage what they had done, which if you think about you know, Hitachi, they're really good at storage and a lot of things that Pentaho doesn't have experience in and infrastructure. So we said, well, why are we trying to do this? Why don't we see what these guys are doing? And we leverage that as part of the Pentaho platform. So that's the first time we've kind of brought some of their technology into the mix with the Pentaho platform. And I think we're going to see more of that. And then lastly, around the visual data prep. So how can we keep kind of building out on that experience to make data prep faster and easier? Right. So can I ask you a, like a really Columbo question on yeah, that on that, that sort of load please balancing do. capability? Yeah, that's a nice looking trench coat you're wearing. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, cigar. So is that the equivalent of a resource negotiator? Do I think of that as sort of your own yarn? Uh, that, you know, that, that I knew you were going to ask me about that. <laughs> is that unfair so to, to position it that way? It, or? It, I mean, conceptually right, it's going to help you to better manage resources, mm -hmm. but if you think about MISOs and yep. some of the capabilities that are out there that folks are using to do that, that's what we're leveraging. So it's really more about, sometimes I just need more capacity for the Pentaho server, but I don't need it all the time. Not every customer is going to get to the scale that they need that, right. so it's a really easy way to just kind of keep bringing that bringing in as much capacity as you need and have it available. I see, so really efficient, so sort of low level yes. kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, cool. So and then when you talk about uh, you know, distributed uh, load execution, um, there's the whole, you know, you're pushing more and more of the processing to the edge, and of course, you've, you, 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 Brian gave a great talk about, um, about edge to outcome. You and I were on a panel with Mark Hall and, and, and Ella Hillal uh, about the so-called power of three, and you did a really good blog post on that, the power of the IOT and big data and predictive, uh, the third is either predictive analytics or machine learning. Yeah. Or Can you give us a quick sense for our viewers about what you mean by the power of three and how it relates to pushing more workloads to the edge and where you know, really Hitachi Vantara is going in terms of your roadmap in that direction for customers? Well, it's interesting because one of the things we, I wish I could, you know, Maybe we have a recording of it, but kind of shrink down that conversation because it's a great conversation. But we we had we covered a lot of ground. But essentially, that power of three is luck. But we started with big data, right? So as we could capture more data, we could store it. That gave us the ability to train and tune models much easier than we could before because it was always a challenge of how do I have that much data to get my model more accurate, mm -hmm. and then. 
you know, over time, right, everybody's kind of become a data scientist with the emergence of R and, you know, it's, it's kind of becoming a little bit easier for people to take advantage of those kinds of tools. So we saw more of that, and then you think about IoT, IoT is now generating even more data, and so, as you said, you're not going to be able to process all of that. You're not going to be able to bring all of that in and store it. It's not really efficient. So that's kind of creating this, we, need, we might need the, the machine learning there at the edge. We, we, we definitely need it in that data store to keep training and tuning those models. And so what it does is though, is if you think about IMS, is they've captured all that data. They can use the um, predictive algorithms to do some of the associations between you know, customer information and the sensor data about driving habits, bring that together. And so it's sort of this perfect storm of the amount of data that's coming in from IoT, the availability of the machine learning, and then the, the data is really what's driving all of that. And I think that Mark Hall on our panel, who's you know a really well-known data mining expert, was like, yeah, it all started because we had enough data, right, to be able to do it. So I want to ask you just sort of a, again, a pr sort of product and, and maybe philosophy yeah. question. It, it, we've talked on theCUBE a lot about the cornucopia of tooling that's out there and yep. the people who try to roll their own. And you know, the big internet companies and the big banks, mm -hmm. they got the resources to do it, but they need companies like you. When, I, when we talk to your customers, they love the fact that there's an integrated data pipeline and you've made their lives simple. I think in 8.0, I saw Spark, you're probably replacing MapReduce and making life yeah, simpler. Making so life you've, you've curated a lot of these, these, these tools. But at the same time, you don't own your own cloud and so you know your own database, et cetera. So what's the philosophy of how you future-proof uh, your platform uh, when you know there are new projects in Apache and new yeah. tooling coming out there? What's the secret sauce behind that? Yeah, well the first one is the open, the open source core because that just gave us the ability to have APIs to extend, to build plugins, all of that, right? And a community that does quite a bit of that when there's, in fact, Kafka started with a customer that built a step initially, right? I mean, we've now brought that into a par product and created it as part of the platform, but those are the kind of things that in an early market, a customer can do at first. We can kind of see what emerges around that and then go, we, we, we will offer it to our customers as a step, but we can also say, okay, now we're ready to kind of productize this. So that's the first thing. And then I think the second one is really around when you see something like Spark emerge, and we were also focused on MapReduce, and how are we going to make it easier, and let's create tools to do that, and we did that, but then it was sort of like, well, MapReduce is going to go away. Well, there still is a lot of MapReduce out there. We know that, so it was like, okay, well, we could see then that MapReduce is going to be here, and I think the numbers are around 50-50. You guys, you probably know better than I do about where Spark is versus MapReduce. I might be off. If we had but George Gilbert, he'd know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's maybe about it's right. That's yeah, about 50-50. Right. So you can't just abandon that, because there's MapReduce out there. And so it was, well, what are we going to do? Well, what we did in the Hadoop distro days is we created a adaptive big data layer that said, let's abstract kind of a layer so that when we have to a support a new distribution of Hadoop, we don't have to go back to the drawing board. So it was the same thing with the execution engines. It was, okay, let's build this adaptive, adaptive execution layer so that we're prepared to deal with other types of engines. I can build the transformation once, execute it anywhere. And so that kind of philosophy of kind of stepping back, if you have that open platform, you can do those kinds of things, right? You can kind of create those layers to remove all that complexity. Because if you try to one off and take on each one of those technologies, whether it's Spark or Flink or whatever's coming. That's just, you know, as a, as a, as a product and a product management organization and a company, that's really difficult, mm -hmm. right? So the community helps a ton on that too. Donna, when you talk to customers uh, about, you, know, you gave a great talk on the roadmap today, give a glimpse of, of where you guys are headed, your basic philosophy, your architecture, what are they pushing you for? Where are they trying to take you? Or where are you trying to take them? <laughs> Well, hopefully a little bit of both, yeah. right? Um, I think it's um, it's being able to take advantage of the kinds of technologies like you mentioned that are emerging when they need them. But they also want us to make sure that all of that is really enterprise ready, right? You're making it solid because we know from history and big data, a lot of those technologies are early. Somebody has to get their knees skinned and all that with the first mm -hmm. one. So they're really counting on us to really make it solid and quality and take care of all of those kind of intricacies of delivering it in a non-open source way where you're making it a real commercial product. So I think that's that's one thing. And then the second piece that we're seeing a lot more of as, 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 as part of Hitachi, you know, we've moved up into the enterprise. We also need to think a lot more about monitoring, administration, 
security, all of the things that kind of go at the base of a pipeline. And so um, that's an area where they want us to focus. The great thing is with, as part of Hitachi Vantara now, those aren't areas that we always had a lot of expertise in, right? But Hitachi does, because those are kind of infrastructure-ish type yep. technology. So I think the push to do that is really strong, and now we'll actually be able to do more of it because of we've got that access to the portfolio. And, and I don't know if this is a fair question for you, uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> and and Because you just talked about some of the things Hitachi brings and that you can leverage, and it's obvious a lot of things that Pentaho brings to mm -hmm. Hitachi, yep. the family. But one of the things that's not talked about a lot is go to market. And Hitachi you know, data systems doesn't traditionally have a lot of, uh, of expertise at going to market with developers as the first step, which mm -hmm. is kind of <laughs> where in your world you start. Uh, have you seen, has Pentaho been able to sort of bring that cultural aspect to the new entity. Yeah, so for us it's 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 actually, even though we have the open source world, it's less of a developer and more of a, an architect or a CIO or somebody who's looking at Early that adopter, later. It's, yeah. or, you know, and more and more it's the chief data officer mm -hmm. and that type of a persona. Um, I think that as now that we are a new entity, a brand new entity that's a software oriented company, we're absolutely going to play a way bigger role in that because we brought software to market for 13 years, right. you know? So I think, I think we've had early wins. We've had um, places where um, we're able to, to, to help in an account, for instance, if you're in the, the data center, if that's where Hitachi is, right? If you start to get that partnership and we could start to draw the lines from, okay, but who are the people who are now looking at what's the big data strategy? What's the IoT strategy? Where is the CDO? That's where we've had a much better um, opportunity to get to bigger up to bigger sales in the enterprise in those global accounts, and so I think we'll see more of that. Also, there's the whole transformation of Hitachi as well, right? So I think there'll just be a, a, a need to have much more of that software experience. And also, Hitachi's hired you know two new executives, one on the on the sales right. side from from SAP, and one who's now my boss, Brad Surik, who's on, from GE Digital. So I right. think there's a lot of um, good strong leadership around the software side and then obviously all of the expertise that the folks at Pintaho have. So. That's interesting, that chief data officer role yep. is emerging as a target for you. We were at a, an event on Tuesday in Boston, about 200 chief data uh, officers there and I think about 25% had a robotic process automation initiative going on. Yeah, now that's, yeah. Just, they didn't ask about IOT, just this <laughs> little right. piece of IOT. So, so, and then Jim, data scientists and that whole you know world is, is now you know right. your world. Yes, okay, great. absolutely. Donna Perlich, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Dave Vellante for Jim Kobiel. Let's keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're live from Pentaho World 2017. Hashtag PWorld17, brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. We'll be right back. <laughs>